How to stack Aruba switches. Here I have two Aruba HP E2930M switches. On the right side we have four copper SFP combo ports with management and console. Let's look into the back side. So on the back side we have two modules and one for the stacking. You can see I've already installed the stacking modules in both the switches. We also have the module for MagSec and a redundant power supply as well. So to the right of the stacking modules, it's a module for MagSec, which is the four port uh, SFP module that goes there. Let me install it and show you. I'm gonna unpack the max. Oh boy, I, I didn't bring my regular equipment. Oh my god, okay. Well, never mind. So, I'm just gonna try my best to hold the camera and uh, let me show you the full port max module uh, that, that will go right next to the stacking. You can see there is a one, two, three, four, four ports, and based on your master switch it is going to have one or rather switch ID it will get its port ID switch one will be one slash a1 a2 a3 a4 and switch two would be two slash a1 two slash a2 two slash a3 and two slash a4 by the way, Aruba will send you a tool to unscrew and screw these modules back in. So let me just show you. You just go ahead and put that in and make sure you push that in. It's going to have a click. once, And then you can manually tighten those with... Oh boy, uh, my camera. Um, never mind. So you can either use a regular... Phillips head screwdriver. I'm here using that hex bit to tighten that in. Make sure you do not let it go all the way because it will snap out. I have had it done. <clears throat> we use drill because this is the time where I'm installing about 100 of switches so I use the drill to make the process go faster. Let me go ahead and install the second MagSec module as well and then I will connect these switches with the stacking cable and I will show you the Buddha process. Alright, so here I have my stacking cables. I will have, um, I hope you can see it. Um, so I'll have the part number in the description. Uh, and um, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Just like Cisco, you'll just go crisscross um, and chain once you have them both plugged in I'm gonna go ahead and plug in both and then I will power on my first switch show you the uh, commands to configure it and then uh, I'll go ahead uh, power on the second uh, there is some bonus material of real life issue with this Aruba stacking. I have not seen that on Cisco so stay tuned. Initial booting gets pretty loud so I'll go ahead and mute this session and I will take you straight to the console. All right, all right. So my switch is finished booting. Um, let me show you my console configuration. Just like Cisco, same. No, I'm actually using Cisco console cable, so there's no configuration difference. Uh, make sure your X on off is off. All right, so double tap. All right. So we have. Let's just show stacking. If I can spell. My goodness. It's cold. All right, so show stacking will show you your uh, AOS version. It will show you how many switches you have. Currently, I have one, and it is Commander. Make sure your primary switch here is called Commander. 
I'm going to go ahead and set the priority. It is always the best practice to set your priority of your switch while building the stack. 255 is the highest, by the way. And remember, for Cisco, it's 15. Let's go ahead and power my second switch. You see those orange light? Don't worry about it. It's just letting you know that the second member is not active. Something's wrong with the stacking. Um, so let's move on to the console. All right, so my second switch has finished booting up. Show stacking. Um, all right, it shows that it came up as a standby. So and uh, priority 128. Let's go ahead and set the priority. 254 is the next one to pick if you are building this stack. And show stacking will dictate that it has updated the priority. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to simulate power outage. Mean I'm going to just turn off the power strip these switches are connected with. And let's see what happened. Couple of side note. Why do we set priority? So the reason we set priority, so when a stack reboots, uh, it, there will be an election and based on the highest priority switch will become the commander. Well, that's how we have seen it in Cisco. Things are a little different on Aruba side. Um, so the election do happen, but it is not necessarily the highest priority. The sequence of boot, I mean whichever switch boot first or gets the power first becomes the commander and the next one will be standby and if you have more than two switches uh, everything else would become the member switches all right some bonus information like in Cisco you know you do a reload command and from the primary switch if you do so it will reload the stack but with Aruba if you do reload it will only reload that particular switch doesn't matter primary standby it will reload only that particular switch in order to boot a whole stack you have to do the command boot system that will restart the whole stack and if you do so at that time you will see the priority command do take over and uh, your highest priority switch will become your master or primary <clears throat> or commander sorry and then uh, your next highest would be standby and following other switches would be member switches okay both of my switches are back up let's take a look show stacking and um, well there you have it one great example even though 255 primary switch priority set it became standby and 254 lower priority device became commander so during the simulation of power failure we saw somehow the second switch pulled power before the first one even though its priority was 254 it became the commander so I'm going to go ahead and factory reset the switch, command is stacking factory reset, which will consequently reload the switch. And you will see during this reload, um, switch 1 will come up first and switch 2 will come up second. And even though they are set to factory, which is both their priority will stay 128, the top switch will become the commander. Let's take a look. By the way, this command in a true sense is a factory reset. If you do this, it will con wipe out all the configuration, including stacking and running configuration. So make sure don't do this in production. All right, so now, as you can see, both the switches are up with the top one being the commander, even though the priorities were the same. Um, it's a very great thing that I was able to show you this. Needless to say, I will go ahead and uh, set the priority and uh, make the 255 top one, 254, and then I will show you the command show boot, which will reload both the switch in a software reload option, and they both come back with exactly the way you wanted them to.
but it doesn't always work when you do the power outage and when the power comes back both the switches um, you never know which one will be commander standby switch is booting at this point you cannot make any configuration changes you just have to wait this thing sometimes takes longer depending on your number of switches in your stack but okay I was able to set the secondary I'm gonna go ahead and um, save it and uh, reload the stack using boot system now this will restart your whole stack and um, let's take a look what happens all right, so both the switches are back. Let's take a look at the stacking. And uh, hope, here you go. You see that the top one became the commander and the second one became the standby. Something new we have both learned with Aruba compared to Cisco. Another pro tip with Aruba switches, there is no renumbering. So guys, if you're building the stack in a staging or in your rack, make sure you power the switches from the top to bottom, one, two, three, four, and then set the priority as you go along. There's no such thing as renumbering your member switches in Aruba. Okay, and there you have it friends, a short and a simple video to show you how to stack Aruba HPE switches with lots of tips and few configuration comparisons with Cisco. Now, if you have learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up and for any future videos, hit that subscribe button. See you soon with another information packed video and I don't have a clue to what I'm going to make next. Thank you.